Hello and welcome back to Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew, Case of the Sneaky Snowman. Chapter 7, Chill on the Hill. That's the name we found at the scenes of the crimes, George exclaimed. Bradley's got to be guilty. Go ahead, Nancy, Bess said. She pointed to the keyboard. Send Bradley an instant message. Nancy thanked Ned and signed off. I think I'd rather question Bradley face to face first, she said, if we can find him again. We can look for Bradley in the park, George said. Nancy thought about Bradley's fancy moves on his snowboard. Or we can look for him somewhere else, she said. Where? Bess and George asked together. Nightmare Hill, Nancy said with a grin. Whoa, George cried. That's the steepest hill in River Heights. You have to be super brave to go down Nightmare Hill, Bess said. It's or super crazy. Nancy thought of Bradley and said, exactly. Nightmare Hill was five blocks away. The girls had permission to walk there together. As they stood on the hilltop, they saw a few extreme sledders and snowboarders, but not Bradley. I guess even Bradley's not crazy enough to go down Nightmare Hill, Nancy sighed. They were about to walk away when someone yelled, King of the Hill, I'm King of the Hill, woo-hoo! Nancy whipped around, zipping down the hill on his snowboard was Bradley Sorensen. He was wearing black ski goggles, a blue parka, and matching pants. Suddenly, Nancy noticed something else. Look at Bradley's gloves, Nancy said. They're green, the same color as the woolly thread we found. I told you he was guilty, George said. Not yet, Nancy said. There's one more thing I want to find out. Bradley began climbing back up the hill. Bradley Sorensen, Nancy called. I can't believe it. Can I have your autograph? Can I? Can I? Huh? George said. Nancy, yuck, Bess whispered. Bradley looked surprised too. My what? He asked. Your autograph, Nancy said. You're going to be famous. You're going to be a famous Olympic snowboarder someday. So I want to be the first fan to get your autograph. I think I'm going to barf, George muttered. Bradley grinned. He reached into his pocket and pulled out an empty candy bar wrapper. Then he pulled out a pen. Nancy watched as Bradley scribbled his name on the wrapper. Here, Bradley said, he held out the wrapper. But next time I charge five bucks. Nancy snatched the wrapper. She looked at the autograph and shouted, just as I thought, green ink. Bess jabbed the autograph. And look, she said, the letter S is curly, the same as the message. What are you girlies talking about? Bradley cried. You're the one who did all those mean pranks in the park, Nancy said. You're the snowman. Bradley narrowed his eyes at the girls. Then he slipped his feet into a snowboard and said, oh yeah, catch me if you can. The girls watched as Bradley pushed down the hill. Oh, great, George said. He's getting away. Bess glanced around. She ran over to a big sheet of cardboard and dragged it over. What's that? Nancy asked. An instant sled, Bessie said. Hop on. But this is Nightmare Hill, George cried. They sat in a row on the cardboard. Then they leaned forward and pushed it down the hill. Whoa! The girl shouted. Nancy gritted her teeth as they sped after Bradley. It was like being on the bumpiest, scariest roller coaster ride. King of the hill, Bradley shouted as he gained speed. King of the... Ah! Bradley's snowboard flipped over. He flew through the air and landed right in the snowbank. The cardboard slide stopped at the bottom of the hill. The girls jumped off and ran to Bradley. He was standing up, covered with snow. Now you're king of the spill, George laughed. Why did you do it, Bradley? Nancy asked. Why did you do all those pranks? I don't know what you're talking about, Bradley growled. Bradley dusted himself off. Suddenly, Nancy spotted something stuck in his sleeve. It looked like a strand of green silly string. I think you do know what I'm talking about, Nancy said. She plucked the string from his sleeve and smiled. Bradley stared at the string and sighed. Okay, so I squirted a bunch of sleds, he said, and prepared and papered some bushes and threw some eggs. Big deal. You forgot something, George said. You knocked down our snowman, too. No way, Bradley said. That I didn't do. You didn't? Nancy asked. Nah, Bradley said. I stopped knocking down snowman in second grade. Bradley picked up his board, then he stomped his way up the hill. How do you know he's telling the truth? Bess asked. George pointed to one of Bradley's footprints. His boots have that starry design on the sole, 
George said, just like the footprints near the pranks, but not like the ones near Sherlock, Beth said. I don't think Bradley knocked down Sherlock, Nancy said, and he went and he won't make any more trouble either now that we know who the snowman is. But we still don't know what happened to Sherlock, George said. Nancy, Bess, and George chatted as they walked away from the hill. The friends still couldn't believe they had sledded down the highest hill in River Heights. But I built a sled, Bess said proudly. Well, sort of. The girls headed back to the Drew house. Nancy's puppy, Chocolate Chip, was tethered to a tree in the front yard. The chain fastened to Chip's collar was long enough for her to romp around in the snow. Chip buried her little brown face in the snow. When she pulled it out, it was completely white. Chip loves the snow, Nancy said. I can see that, George laughed. Inside the house, the girls sat around the kitchen table drinking Hannah's yummy hot chocolate. They forgot all about the case as they giggled and licked chocolate mustaches from their lips and they sipped their last drops. Hannah held, Hannah held out Chip's, Chip's leash. Now that you've had some hot chocolate, Hannah said, how about walking chocolate chip? Nancy, Bess, and George bundled up again and went outside. Chip's chain was still attached to the tree, but Chip was gone. Nancy's heart beat faster and faster. Bess, George, she stammered, somebody took my dog. Uh -oh. Chapter eight, Chip, Chip, hooray. Nancy was about to shout for Hannah when she heard a bark. She ran onto the sidewalk and looked down the street. A boy was carrying Chip away. It looks like Toby Leo, Nancy said. What's he doing with Chip? Bess asked. Chip's ears flopped up and down as Toby hurried down the block. Toby, stop, Nancy shouted. Toby looked over his shoulder. His mouth dropped open when he saw the girls. Chip barked. As she jumped out of Toby's arms, she dragged the scarf off his neck. Sorry, Nancy, Chip. Sorry, Nancy. Toby called as he ran away. I didn't mean it, honest. The girls raced over to Chip. Nancy scooped her up and held her tight. She attached Chip's leash to her puppy's collar. Why would Toby take Chip? Nancy asked. Maybe he wanted a puppy. Bess said with a shrug. Everybody wants a cute little puppy. Nancy thought of Cassidy making snow angels and singing about a puppy. That's when it began to click. Didn't Madame Chocolata tell Cassidy she would get a puppy? Nancy asked. Yeah, so? George said. Maybe Toby took Chip to give to Cassidy, Nancy said. So it would look like Deidre's fortune came true. Maybe Toby is making all of Madame Chocolat's fortunes come true, George said. Like Marcy's bracelet and Trina's basketball and Sherlock, Bess gasped. Nancy picked up the scarf. It had a tiny hole at the end just like the ones she had wrapped around Sherlock. Toby lives right around the corner, Nancy said. She tried the scarf. She tied the scarf around her neck. Let's see what we can what we can find out. The clue crew walked Chip around the corner to the Leo house. George rang the doorbell. Ding dong. When no one answered, they headed around to the house to the backyard. There was a swing set and snow-covered picnic table, but no Toby. Just then, Chip tugged at her leash. The little puppy pulled Nancy in the direction of a tree. What is it, girl? Nancy asked. Maybe she has to go again, George said. But when Chip stopped at the tree, she started digging. She dug and dug until she reached something in the snow. Nancy could see there were, there were little round dog kibbles. Best, George, look, Nancy said. Those are the same kind of kibbles we used for Sherlock's nose and mouth. What else is down there? George asked. While Chip munched on the kibbles, the girls brushed away more snow. Buried underneath was a pair of old rubber boots. My dad's boots, George exclaimed. Nancy picked one up. It felt heavy. She tipped it over and a stock of broccoli and earmuffs spilled out. Those are the earmuffs I made for Sherlock, Bess cried. And, that, and that's his broccoli nose. Nancy scratched Chip behind her ears. Good girl, Chip, she said. You found some awesome clues, and I think we found the person who knocked down Sherlock. Nancy hurried to bring Chip home. Then the clue crew marched straight to the park. They walked past a long line of kids in front of Madame Chocolata's tent. Hey, wait your turn, a boy shouted out. 
Quit jumping the line, a girl said. Um, we're delivering marshmallows, George said quickly. Can't tell fortunes without marshmallows. The girls slipped inside the tent. Deidre and Toby were sitting on the blanket, counting dollar bills. 15, 16, Toby counted. 17, Toby Leo, Nancy snapped. What? Toby cried. The dollars flew out of his hands as he jumped up. Nancy, I, I gave you back your dog. What's up, Deidre asked. I mean, what can Madame Chocolata tell you today? How about telling us if Toby knocked down our snowman, Nancy said. Tell us, Toby, George said, or we'll tell your parents that you took Nancy's dog right out of her yard. I told you I didn't mean to take the puppy, Toby said. It was temporary insanity, temporary insanity. Dog, snowman, Deidre, Deidre said, what's going on? Toby hung his head. Okay, okay, he said. I've been listening in on your fortunes, Deidre, and I've been making them come true. What? Deidre gasped. I knocked down their snowman, Toby went on. I even put on his boots and walked out of the park so it would look like his footsteps. And you buried the boots in your yard, Nancy said, along with the kibbles, the earmuffs, the broccoli nose. But I kept the scarf, Toby cut in. He pointed to the scarf around Nancy's neck. Blue is my favorite color. Why did you do it, Toby? Bess asked. So Madame Chocolata would have lots of customers, Toby explained. We were splitting the money, even Stephen. The more money I got, the more I'd have to buy that new sled I wanted. Nancy got it. No wonder Toby was staring into the toy store window yesterday. But I had to use all my money to buy stuff like pizzas and plastic bracelets, Toby said with a frown. I even gave Trina Vanderhoof one of my own basketballs because I couldn't afford to buy a new one. Deidre glared at Toby long and hard. All this time, I thought my fortunes were coming true, she said between gritted teeth. I was going to have my own fortune cookies, a new website. I was even going to write a best-selling book called Mystic Marshmallows. Sorry, Deidre, Toby said. Once I started, I couldn't quit, but I'll quit now, I promise. Deidre reached up and pulled off her turban. Well, if I can't tell fortunes, then I quit too, she declared. What? Nancy, Bess, and George said together. These hoop earrings pinch, and this stupid tent is freezing, Deidre groaned. And if I have to stare at one more marshmallow, I'll flip. So you're not Madame Chocolata anymore? Nancy asked. I am so over it, Deidre said. She turned to Bess. I'm sorry I said you'd fall, you'd fall on the ice. I was just mad you called me silly. And I'm sorry I called you silly, Bess said. Nancy was so happy she could do cartwheels. The clue crew solved the case, and Bess and Deidre made up. Just then, the kids outside the tent began to shout, We want Madame Chocolata! We want Madame Chocolata! We want Madame Chocolata! Uh-oh, Nancy said. How are you going to tell all those kids that you quit? Oh, I'm not telling them, Deidre said. She crossed her arms and turned to Toby. Me? Toby squeaked. Nancy, Bess, and George slipped out of the tent past the crowd. Did you hear that? Bess said happily. Deidre made up the fortunes that I'd fall in the, in the show. And Toby confessed to knocking down Sherlock, Nancy said. So we solved the case. They were about to high five when Nancy saw something big and white flit by in the distance. This time, Bess and George saw it too. Did you see that? Bess gasped. It looked like a walking snowman. He's back, Nancy said slowly. Back, George said. You mean you saw him once before? Nancy explained how she had seen a figure that looked like a snowman, but she hadn't said anything because she wasn't sure if she saw it or not. The girls walked away carefully to where they had seen the figure, but all they could see were his footprints. They weren't like the footprints the boots had made, though. They were huge, deep holes in the snow. Nancy, Bess, and George were silent as they stared at the strange footprints. This case is not closed, Nancy said. Not until we find out who that was, or what it was, Bess, Bess said with a shiver. That night, Nancy sat in the den watching TV. She wasn't really paying attention, though. She was too busy wondering about the mysterious figure they had seen in the park that day. It looked like a snowman, Nancy thought, but was it a snowman? 
Nancy clicked the remote to surf the channels. She stopped when she saw a news reporter standing in front of the River Heights Museum of Natural History. It was Nancy's favorite museum. It even had dinosaur bones inside. There have been many sightings of the Yeti, the reporter said, also known as the abominable snowman. Nancy sat up straight. Did she, see, did she say snowman? Okay. So, one mystery solved, but one mystery remains. Tune in next time for the conclusion of the case of the sneaky snowman. And we'll see if there really is a snowman walking around. See you next time.